You know, in the modern AEW, WWF, New Japan, all the federations across the world, all lots of this guy, uh, according to Rocky Johnson, Rocky's father, uh, Maivia's father, he was a major influence on The Rock. According to Bret Hart, uh, anything you wanted to learn to be a wrestler could get over came from this guy. Now, I saw this guy in person for Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling, and he was at the tail end of his career, but my God, the charisma he showed. So on our latest Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling podcast, we're going to look at the great man, Reginald Seeky, known as to his friends as Sweet Daddy Seeky. He got his nickname from a beautiful woman at a Canadian wrestling event and uh, the rest is history. This American-Canadian retired pro wrestler and singer uh, is believed to be the first African-American to challenge for the NWA World Heavyweight title. Now, Siki started wrestling in 1955 in Artesia, New Mexico. Now, a native, native of <coughs> Montgomery, Texas, born June 16, 1940. Also did some training with Ellie with Sandor Zabo and Ray Ortega. At the time, he weighed about 180 pounds when he started, but within three years, according to his own uh, history, he, he clocked in at 230. He eventually moved to Toronto in 61 because it was a central location for which to travel across North America. He still lives in Toronto today and uses it as a base for his country and western band and his work as a karaoke DJ at the Duke on Queen Street East. Now, you can see the very, very popular... A documentary on Sweet Daddy on the free preview in Canada, the documentary channel on the Bell Dish this month. Now, Siki again loved throughout Canada. He was a top draw in the 60s and 70s. He fought and stampede wrestling for years, traveling for with Bearman McKinney Circuit. It was a mainstay again on the Eastern scene, including Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling. Siki is best known for his headbutt or cocoa butt and his neck breaker, neck breaker maneuver. Now, he would enter the ring. It was quite a dramatic performance because he had these beautiful kind of James Brown shoulder, not say jacket, but, you know, a robe on. And he had a couple of uh, what he called makeup mirrors to let everybody else and let himself know how beautiful he was. Now, at his peak, he was a main card attraction in Maple Leaf Gardens and drew fans from the bustles. He made his Maple Leaf Gardens debut in 62 and wrestled there until 1980. In his peak at Maple Leaf Gardens, he earned up to 3000 about and received bundles of mail from fans across the world. In the 1970s, he wrestled two well-known radio and TV hosts in Toronto, Chum Radio's Terry Steele and City TV's Gene Taylor. He used an airplane spin which should, he should bring back as a finisher in both matches. Now, Siki was brought into CWA Memphis on March 25th, 85 by Tux Newman for three weeks. He first wrestled a handicap match and then wrestled Mike Sharp or Iron Mark Sharp, Sharp the following two weeks. Now, Siki now hosts karaoke Saturday afternoons at the Duke Bar at Queen and Leslie Streets in Toronto. Along the way, he has secured six major wrestling belts, including the Austra Asian Championship, the North American Championship three times, the Texas title, and the Tag Team Heavyweight Crown. Siki, uh, although very successful in the ring, suffered many major injuries throughout his career. Two broken ribs, had his hands broken twice, his ankle and leg broken, and half his face paralyzed. In the 1980s, he wrestled across the Maritimes and in small northern Ontario towns. Siki wrote his own theme song for his matches, including, uh, it was called I Am Proud of What I See, and uh, Siki, also, Siki also wrestled an album on vinyl. He loved the kids and he loved the women, and when I used to see him do autographs, the lineup was so long he couldn't start the second uh, matches until Siki was done. Now, during this time, he also started to teach the craft at Sully's Toronto Youth Athletic Club on Sundays. He continued to wrestle into the 1990s. He was also affiliated with a Toronto wrestling school throughout the 80s and the mid-90s, initially in partnership with Johnny Powers. Besides Canada, CK has wrestled across the States, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas, and Trinidad and Tobago. The second album by the Henrys, Chasing Grace, contains the song titled Sweet Daddy Siki. Toronto-based Pork Belly Futures featured him in her second album with the song Sweet Daddy Siki. 
uh, when he made an appearance on WWE SmackDown on September 13, 2011 for Edge Appreciation Night, along with several other WWE legends and former superstars. And the Edge basically said the uh, reason he became a wrestler was because of Sweet Daddy. Now, let's look over the titles, and there's quite a few. 50 at State Big Time Wrestling. He was a North American Championship uh, uh, holder, Hawaii version, once. An NWA Hawaii Tag Team title holder with Moondog Maine one time. Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling Champion with, of course, my old buddy, the Cuban Assassin. Big Time Wrestling. He was World Tag Team title uh, holder with, get this, Haystacks Calhoun, of all people. Now, he was at Maple Leaf Wrestling. He was NWA International Tag Team title holder, Toronto version one time with Bulldog uh, Brower. NWA All-Star Wrestling, Canadian Tag Team Championship uh, title holder, Vancouver version with Kinji Suboya. Southwest Sports Incorporated. He was NWA Texas title holder. Midwest Wrestling, MWA Ohio Tag Team title winner with Leon Graham. NWA Ohio Eastern States Heavyweight Champion. Professional wrestling, he was considered the World Negro Heavyweight Championship holder one time, which was a precursor again to the uh, uh, what he called the NWA uh, International uh, title. Stampede Wrestling, he was NWA Canadian Heavyweight Championship, Calgary version once, and Stampede North American Heavyweight title uh, winner one time. World Wrestling Council in Puerto Rico, North American Heavyweight Champion twice, and a 2016 inductee in the Canadian Wrestling Hall of Fame. Now, the uh, the NWA Eastern States Heavyweight title was defended in Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling in the early to mid-1970s, and this title would go to on to be renamed the NWA Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Championship. Now, to my knowledge, I know he had matches against the Funks, and I think he had matches against Harley Race and Ric Flair. I know this for sure, because you rest, wrestle in Canada, it would cross over. Not sure if it was an AWA, but you can uh, you can uh, 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 look, at, look at that for me. Now, uh, if you want to find uh, more about the um, Sweet Daddy Siki, Daddy Siki legacy, Canadian Wrestling Hall of Fame on Slam Wrestling, uh, the WrestlingTitles.com, the World Negro Heavyweight Title uh, uh, Lesson, NWA Texas Heavyweight Title, again, Wrestling Titles as well, as well, and a lot of information for this story was called from WrestlingTitles.com. Now, um, the documentary that's on... Um, the documentary channel might be on CBC Gem, but I think it's on, on pay... Uh, when it's on a course on free preview, preview. but should check it out. Amazing guy. I only met him once, never had a chance to talk to him, but I, I, I cheered him on and I said, Sweet Daddy, what do you think of the crowd? And he gave me a thumbs up. And let me tell you something, every time he traveled, he gave people a thumbs up and he made us feel good. But if I know anything, there's got to be a sign mirror out there someplace of Sweet Daddy, uh, no, Sweet Daddy, what he called those pleasure mirrors, as they were, it was once called. I like to have that in my collection. Like uh, one of these mirrors signed either the back or the front. And I know Edge, The Rock, Bret Hart, everybody else, they would probably tell you he should be in the WWE Wrestling Hall of Fame. Uh, hopefully one day. If the other people that don't deserve it are in there, certain people who do, do deserve to be in there should be in there. There should be more recognition for Stampede, Maple Leaf, and Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling, what he called alumni. And I really think, you know, that the Cuban Killer Carl Krupp, there should be on total, what the, what the WWE should do is make a legacy thing to take the Quebec and Canadian pro writers and go to them and said, who do you think should be in a Canadian wing of the WWE Hall of Fame? And he would definitely be a first ballot. A sweet Daddy Siki, tremendous athlete, tremendous. He was over when the word over wasn't over. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, subscribe, share, or super, share or super chat, and keep an eye on some different podcasts in March, including my Promise Montreal Canadiens ones, Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling, uh, Oscar, uh, we're going to do some Oscar ones next week. And don't forget, this is a diverse channel. Requests are always, always highly considered and always highly appreciated. Thanks for listening. Bye.